Glad that you're joining us uh, for another Bible study as we uh, look at uh, Holy Week. Uh, I'm Pastor Chris and Emmanuel in Giddings, Texas, and uh, today we're going to be looking at a little bit of the Passover uh, that Jesus uh, has with his disciples. Um, uh, before we get into the reading and actually look at it, let's just kind of do a quick recap of what the Passover was. Uh, if you remember back in Exodus, um, we have uh, the 10 plagues. And uh, remember, those are the ones where um, God sends Moses uh, to Pharaoh to free God's people uh, from Egypt. And the last one is when the angel of death passes over um, and killing all the firstborns. And those Israelites who took in, uh, took a lamb and slaughtered it and painted over uh, the doorpost with the blood and then went into their house and ate uh, the meal, uh, those are the ones that would be saved and hence being the Passover. So the angel of death passes over uh, the houses and so that they were saved. And this was something that they were supposed to do uh, year after year uh, in remembrance of how God had delivered uh, the people. It was something you're supposed to teach your young children, it was something you're supposed to teach uh, your families, uh, generation to generation, reminding them of God's love and his mercy. Now, uh, when you fast forward here to Jesus, Jesus is coming in and they're going to celebrate the Passover and they're celebrating in Jerusalem, uh, the place where uh, the tabernacle was, the, the place of the temple. And so there they are. Our story um, is found in Matthew and Luke and a little bit of Mark. And um, what I want us to do is... Um, Let's just take here, we're going to read out of Luke real quick. Uh, in Luke chapter 22, verse 7, it says, Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover of the Lamb had uh, to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that uh, we may eat, uh, eat it. Okay, um, now we also remember like Jesus is dying on the, the same type when they're, they're being sacrificed. Uh, there are some scholars that will talk about how the Passover, because it became so big, that everybody came to Jerusalem to sacrifice their lamb. Uh, this actually could have been a festival uh, a couple days long, not just one day. So uh, based off of your clan, based off of maybe um, your region, uh, you had different times that you came to Jerusalem uh, to share this. Um, they came and uh, in verse 9 it says, and they said to him, where will you have us prepare it? And he said to them, behold, when you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters and tell the master of the house. The teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will uh, show you a large upper room furnished and prepared there. Okay, so uh, I got to say, this is kind of interesting. Remember uh, on Sunday, as we looked at this, uh, as we looked at Palm Sunday, um, Jesus tells the disciples, go and find a colt. Um, and all you got to do is say is the master needs it and poof, you'll have the colt and you'll be able to use that. Uh, same kind of concept here. It says basically just say whoever to the room um, that... Uh, you're just supposed to say the master needs it, right? Uh, tell the teacher or tell them that the teacher needs it. And so therefore, um, and teacher probably here being rabbi needs it, um, you'll get the upper room. They get the upper room. And uh, so you have this idea. So now they're gonna go through the Passover meal. Uh, it's multi uh, meals, multiple different pieces. Um, you know, there are some scholars trying to debate where, at what part does the, the Lord's Supper part come in? Um, but they're, they're celebrating this. This is one big festival and one big uh, piece uh, of their history. Okay, in verse 14 it says, And when the hour came, he reclined at the table, and the apostles said, uh, or sat with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until... Uh, it is uh, fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup. And uh, when he had given thanks, he said, Take this 
and divide it among yourselves. Uh, for I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine unt until the kingdom of God comes. Okay, so um, it talks about he's going to suffer. It talks about that he's not going to have this meal again or have kind of food until uh, he is uh, dead. Now, so what does it mean by the kingdom of God comes? Um, you know, ultimately, we wait for the final part, right, where Jesus comes back and he uh, is in uh, creating the new heaven and new earth. Uh, I don't think that's what this is meaning at this point, because he does eat uh, the meals with him. I think what we're really looking at is he's not going to be until God or Jesus comes into his glory. And we don't see that until the resurrection. We see that at the end when he comes back in and when he is... Uh, uh, risen from the dead. So uh, we're thinking through that the kingdom comes is that part uh, when he comes again, uh, when uh, the fulfillment of all the prophecies, uh, which all point to his death and his resurrection. And so I think that's where we're looking at. Then we get the institution of Holy Communion. <clears throat> Verse 19. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took the cup after uh, they had eaten, saying, This cup is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. Behold, or But behold, the hand of him who betrays uh, me is uh, with me on this er, on this table for the son of man goes as he has been determined but woe to the man by whom he is betrayed okay and then they start to question uh, we see in the text they'll start to question they go to some other ones uh, other um, Matthew will talk about a little bit of here uh, who's really going to be and everybody's kind of asking questions uh, even judas uh, will ask this question um, <clears throat> we're gonna look at judas later uh, so i don't really want to talk too much about that but i want to talk about this passover meal and the significance the meal itself you have the unleavened bread and you have the cup the wine and um, the bread of life or giving life, right? So Jesus will say he is the bread of life. Um, uses that terminology, um, the bread that will give uh, nourishment. Uh, we know as we fast forward a little bit in from uh, Exodus, as they uh, leave in this first uh, Passover meal, they'll end up getting manna, uh, the bread from heaven that comes down to feed them and nourish them. And it's that that sustains them in the desert. We see uh, that the bread is the basic meal, right? It's it what gives them uh, food. Uh, so in this bread, he's saying this is a part of his body. Uh, this is the nourishment uh, that is giving him substance. Uh, you can also equate this a little bit with that Lamb of God, right? The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, uh, the meat of the lamb in the Passover, uh, that first one, where they slaughtered the lamb and they ate it. And in their digestions, uh, uh, that was part of their meal. Here we see Jesus being slaughtered and hear him dying. And uh, his death uh, is like that lamb. Uh, and then we partake in that. We, we eat his body, uh, a part of that meal. And then the cup, right? The, the, the wine. Uh, and then Jesus says, this is the blood, right? So um, there we have this uh, idea or this concept that comes across as that lamb that was slaughtered and its blood was painted over the door frame. Now that blood of the lamb is being digested into you and you are receiving him, which is Jesus Christ, the true lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so now that becomes a part of you. And so that is where we see this, the, the forgiveness of sins being um, poured out 
uh, to each and every one of us as we take communion. And I know this has got to be hard for all of us because um, it's a little bit harder right now for us to do communion and do it in different spots. Um, but we're reminded of what God is doing for us and he's telling us and sharing that with us. We're excited uh, when we see this and when we look at this. Um, Jesus is not saying this is some representation. He's literally saying, this is my body. Uh, when you are receiving that, you truly are receiving his body and his blood. Uh, it is his. Uh, and you partake in that meal, that lamb, that Passover feast, the, the lamb uh, that was slaughtered, you're receiving that. And as, as we got it, uh, we are so excited as we get to take that. Um, I hope that you enjoy your time. Uh, may God bless you and keep you. Um, let me quickly pray for you. Heavenly Father, we ask uh, that you bless us this uh, wonderful uh, time. Uh, be with us and strengthen us uh, in our faith. In your son Jesus Christ's name, amen. Have a wonderful and blessed day.